That's good coffee. Hello everyone, testing the audio levels here. And of course, as usual, let me know if the audio is a bit too loud in terms of the music or anything. Hey, Ramesses, good to see ya. All right, Elk Adventure, good to see ya. Oh, hey! <laughs> Joyful, it's awesome, good to see ya. Hey guys, Obsidian Contraption. Evening. So, I went to play uh, with my um, Irish music at the pub last night, and I had... Um, I'd canceled the past four weeks. I normally uh, go once a week, and I, I canceled because I was busy working. Um, and so I, I made sure to go last night, and I was I was already like mentally, my brain was already stretched out by the time that I, I got to the pub to play. So one of my uh, fellow um, um, players there, you know, I said, oh, hey, you know, how's it going? And I was, my brain was so tired, you know, and this is like, seven o'clock at night already, and I, I was like, oh, hi, good morning, and he stared at me and thought, oh, great, um, and I bumped, uh, I took my fiddle out of the case, I had my shoulder rest, and I bumped the shoulder rest against the fiddle, and it knocked the sound post out, and the sound post, you know, has to be inside, it distributes the tension from the top of the instrument to the bottom, um, and I knocked that out, and I need to, I need to fix that today, so that already was was a rough start to the night. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna figure out how to get the chat back into OBS. Let me just have a look at OBS here. Is this it? Okay. Hey, great. Okay, we've got it. Hey, so Pico, 6073, good to see you. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, hello, I believe I commented on your Twitter page regarding Game Boy versions of Breath of Thunder. I, I haven't had a chance to read that yet. I actually, you can't find the seventh, seventh mushroom. Let me go ahead, okay. Let's just have a look here. <laughs> I'm blocking an important part of the window that I need. Let me move the chat. Okay. Here's what I think. Okay, so I placed all the mushrooms, the mushroomons, and what happened was I was using placeholder grass and it was a little it was a little short right the placeholder grass and so I was I, I hand drew uh, this new grass uh, texture um, and I made it taller and thicker than the temporary placeholder grass and I think I ended up hiding the one of the mushroom ones pretty badly so let's go ahead and so for anyone looking for the mushroom on and this is a question people had for um, the Dreamcast version. Um, how would I use the VMU? If I have access to the V, if, if we do get funded to the Dreamcast level, which is pretty far, um, then I would use the VMU to where you could actually um, uh, catch Mushroom on, on the VMU and you would raise them using um, the VMU with minigames, and then you would use the VMU to load the Mushroom on back into your party on the Dreamcast version, and then you would have a Mushroom on that would be uh, as part of your, your party, and they can help you in battle as a party member. Uh, because they start out quite small. So here's here's the Bidey. Do you guys have this one here? You only found six of them, but you're terrible at finding things. Oh, you love the grass, it looks fantastic. That's a big deal for me, is grass in RPGs, you know. Um, I drew this one, this is hand-drawn, I drew it in Photoshop, and I just I just wanted something that felt nice to the eyeballs. I was thinking of Super Nintendo grass. I, I was specifically kind of thinking of, you know how, like, in Breath of Fire 2, how you could chop the grass, and it was so satisfying, right? To, like, and then the leaves kind of, it was really satisfying. Um... That's the kind of satisfying grass I was thinking about. So do you guys have this one, the bitey one here? Uh, let's see. We have the flaming one, and I'll go ahead and find that. So there's one there. Did you guys find this one way over here? So this is the flaming one. I always wondered how you develop games for legacy platforms like GBA and DS. Stuff like that always fascinated me. I'll see, I'll see if I can show you some of it later. I have my workstation here. Um, Every platform needs its own specific set of tools, a software development kit. Uh, but before starting this project, I made sure to set up all of those development tools to make sure I can deploy 
a ROM. For me personally, all I really need is how do you draw a background, how do you draw a sprite, and how do you draw text. And if I know how to do that, then I know enough to make a video game on that console. Obviously there's going to be significantly more stuff to it, um, but if you can do those three things, that's mostly all you need. Did you guys get this one back here? So this one's the frosty uh, mushroom on. Um, let's see, so there's one way up top, if you have a look at the map here. Um, so there's one there. Hey, Bender, good to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out. Uh, Godspeed, brother. Graduated with a degree in animation. Congratulations! Well done! And game production a few years ago, so I appreciate what you've been doing here. Nicely done! That's so great. Well done. I went to, um, um, in Australia, we have TAFE, and I did um, a diploma in uh, software development. So it wasn't related specifically uh, to video games, but the stuff that I learned in the software development course is absolutely vital. Um, and I'd say like 70% of the stuff that I learned in that course I use every day is so vital. I'm sorry for the, for the rattling. I need to sort out a better arrangement for my microphone. Um, Super Pixel Pals, this is perfect timing. I had nothing to play and now I get a new unlock code for games. That's right, so for um, you uh, Guardians and Metal Exterminators players, please put your link code, and we have Wood, uh, Wood Wheeler is launching today, so we are, let me go ahead and get that key tool open, so, uh, yeah, a new playable character, Wood, uh, and I'm pretty excited, he's got a whole lot of story as well, um, his story, so in Guardian Metal, Guardians and Metal Exterminators S for the Switch, uh, takes place a couple months after Wood's own game. Wood's game is uh, Deadly Shadows, which was uh, supposed to be made for the 3DS, but I didn't realize how broken the 3DS was, and so I've moved Deadly Shadows to the Switch. But the problem is that's going to be one of the bigger titles in Silver Falls, and I need, I need time to develop it. So I don't have time to work on a large game. Right now I have to work on the smaller games so I can keep uh, money coming into the studio. When I have time, I will do Deadly Shadows. So, it may feel a little out of context. Wood's story in Guardians and Metal Exterminators, as you play, uh, it may feel like you have no idea what he's talking about, uh, and that's because I, I, I was hoping to work on Deadly Shadows and then get that launched, but at the moment, um, I don't have time to work on, on that. So, uh, but eventually, you know, probably next year, I will launch Deadly Shadows, and then it'll make sense. You know, the stuff that Wood's talking about in Guardians of Middle Exterminators. So... Um, um, and for anyone that hasn't seen the Silver Falls game yet, uh, Silver Falls is my game series, and it uses a system called Code Linker, and Code Linker allows you to connect the various Silver Falls games together, and it allows characters to cross over from one game into another, so you could see uh, how that character is going in different points of their lives, and you get to enjoy your favorite playable character. You don't have to leave your favorite main characters behind. Um, you, if there's a, you have a favorite Silver Falls character, the Code Linker system is my promise that I will keep writing that character's story, I will keep including them in games, even if they can't be a part of the main story of a different Silver Falls game, they can be playable in some way, and you get to check in and see how their life is going. Um, Deathly Shadows, there we go, okay. Uh, they got my tool ready. Okay guys, uh, I'll go to the next one, so that's the frosty one, here's the fuzzy one. Oh, did you get this one might this one might be it. That might be the one that's hard to see. Did you guys get this one back here? Hey, Milo, it's great to see you. All right, I'm going to get to the code linker codes now. I'll just show you where the last two mushroom on are. This one's I mean, I put that one there. Uh, originally that was taller grass here, but I removed it. So it, it was going to be a little bit hidden. I removed the taller grass that was there. And the last one is Squishy. I do want the Mushroom Arm to be a sort of virtual pet kind of thing, bare minimum, you know. Uh, but I, I, I wanted this feature to just organically develop and see how I felt about the Mushroom Arm. Um, and it was the Dreamcast version where I thought it would make sense if the Mushroom Arm already existed everywhere, if the VMU was the unique feature that let people um, raise the Mushroom Arm into 
um, a form where they can help you during combat. They can battle. Chino say, <laughs> we getting striking games. <laughs> we're getting we're getting Wood Wheeler. Okay, so there's there's the mushroom. Mod. I kind of think it's the one back here. You guys, let me know. I'll get caught up with the chat now. I'm kind of thinking that might be the one that was a little difficult for people to see. I'm kind of thinking it was that one. Did you guys see that one? Um, because I actually, it was a smaller, it was a smaller cabin before, um, and then I made it bigger, and then I wanted this one to look unique uh, and really stand out, so I put it on stilts, and I think that one, that one's hard to see there. Okay, let me get caught up with the chat, and I'm going to do your code linker codes now. All right, here we go. Let me move this keyboard here. And of course, let me know if the music's too loud. So today I'm going to be working on the UI for the battle system. Okay, so here is... You guys know that I'm always open. Uh, I don't hide anything. But the reason why I haven't... I, hit, I have hid something. I hid the battle system for Breath of Thunder. And that's because this framework uh, that I built originally came from the 3DS. I made this framework to make RPGs for the 3DS. But that means that I spent hundreds of hours creating all of this UI elements for the second screen, uh, and it was meant for a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, and it filled the bottom screen, and that's why I haven't shown the battle system for Breath of Thunder. So today what I'm going to be working on on live stream is I'll be reformatting the UI elements, and you guys get to see what the process is like uh, in terms of taking something off of a second screen like the 3DS and then just trying to fit it onto um, a single screen so it makes sense. So let me go ahead and get the code linker stuff ready. Okay, so, oh, are there, are there going to be any form of switchable party members? I'm, I'm considering being able to have a party switching mechanic, um, but that sort of thing depends, because if I implement party switching, that's going to add, um, like for this version, for the core version, it would be easy for me to implement that, but for the legacy consoles, um, that would add significant development time, that's a mechanic. Uh, that I will have to do a risk analysis on if it adds a significant development time. Um, but again, we don't know how far the campaign will go. So I'm, I will consider that when the campaign ends. But I, I love switching party members out during battle. I love that. Everything about the uh, indie scene is amazing. I love it. I think it, it really should be about um, passion and creating something that that you want, that you believe other people also want, as opposed to how do we fit loot boxes into this? How do we get more money out of people? I think that's, you know, the independent developers, that's what it's all about, is making something out of passion and wanting to create art. Rambling. Oh, hey, good to see you. So uh, I'll show you guys. Um, yeah, let me do the code linker, and then we'll get right to the UI for the battle system. If you got, um, <laughs> if you got um, one thousand seven hundred to spare, then you can be a playable character. Like I didn't, I didn't expect anyone to really, you know, uh, contribute that much. But I, I thought if there was like you know like a millionaire out there and they, they had too much lunch money um, and they like RPGs, maybe they'd want to be a character. So. Yeah, okay. Let me have a look at the code linkers here. So the first one, okay. Um, Matthew, okay. Matthew, your game that you posted in the Discord was really cool. I really liked it. <laughs> Because you had to think, it was such a non-standard uh, way to approach combat, because you had to read, you had to think. For me personally, I this isn't a critique, uh, I really like what you posted. For me personally, I felt like I had too much time to read, but that's because I like playing hero in Smash Bros, so naturally my ability to read is like, it was like, trained under intense pressure. So, I was, when uh, you posted your game in Discord, and I was like, I was in Hero Smash mode where I was reading the text like really fast, and that's how you have to play Hero in Smash because when you're playing Smash and you're playing Hero, you're you know the other people are also reading your menu, so you gotta read really fast. Okay, uh, right. Let me look at the screen here. 
Let me scroll up. Uh, Matthew, okay. S N J V T E. Okay, Matthew, this is your code. This will unlock a new playable character. W J C V W. Right, and again, for anyone that hasn't heard of Silver Falls before, what we're doing on stream here is people that play Silver Falls, your save file for each Silver Falls game has a unique five letter code. And you can use a system called CodeLinker that allows games to connect to each other, and it allows playable characters to cross over from one Silver Falls game into another. So that ensures that your favorite characters, for, for if you, there's a Silver Falls game where you have a favorite character from, I'll never leave that character behind. I'll make sure that even if stories are taking place 15, 20, 30 years later, you'll still get to spend time with your character. They'll still be playable in some way. Okay, Elkin Fencer. P, P, Q, W. Oh, why? So, am I reading this wrong? There's a lot of letters. Oh, P, Q, Y, G, C. Okay, Elkin Fencer. T, M, S, W, Z. Okay, Super Pixel Pals. Great. <laughs> J phone. Oh, you got a real word. That's right. Okay, this is Q P I Q P. So the code that I'm giving you guys is for it connects it to a Silver Falls game that has hasn't launched yet. Um, let's see. It's just like an origin story, like Resident Evil Zero uh, coming out after Resident Evil One. Let's see. Okay, and Super Pixel Pals, your second one. Let me get your second one, Super Pixel Pals. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this uh, up, the codes, and then I'm gonna show you the UI and the battle system. First, what I'll do is I'll boot up the battle system, and you'll guys see what it looks like right now. Uh, let's see. B, G, um, X, and P. Here's your second one. I, Q, R, T, S, nice. High IQ RTS is a real-time strategy game that's like really hard. It's for Rick and Morty player, uh, Rick and Morty watchers. Uh, it's a bad system for them. Okay, so I actually had I had a test event in here. So what I need to do actually is drop my core in here. My framework requires a core to exist. Normally it loads in with a title screen. So I'm going to move my keyboard. Uh, let me know if I didn't get to your um, code. And I got I'll get ca caught up with the chat here. Okay, so we want the core. That's the battle system core. The core does everything. The core holds the database and it holds all of, say for example, like in other environments you would call it like a global variable sort of situation, you know. So I will disable the starting event as well. This is the starting event. It's set to automatically run. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Now I have a test enemy in here. Um, let me see if I can find him. Um, So if I select that and press F, no, that's him back there. Oh, random enemy blob, there we go. So I'm going to re-enable re this. So he, he is actually, this guy was in um, the playable teaser, but I just disabled him. So I'll show you what it looks like right now, because th this one's loud, I'm sorry for the audio, guys. I'll go ahead and run it, and I'll show you what it, what it looks like. And again, another reason I haven't shown much of the battle system is I haven't modeled any of the weapons yet. Um, and I haven't created the particle effects. So the battle system, it's complete. It's a full battle system. It's extremely complex. There's so much depth to it. But if I showed it to you, it would look bad, because people expect there to be weapons. People expect there to be particle effects and all of that stuff. And I haven't written the battle music. Um, and so that's why I haven't shown the battle system. Is it, I could show it to you, but it would look pretty boring. But since we're doing behind the scenes right now, um, I can share that with you. It would make a bit more sense to share uh, the battle system from this respect. And then you'll see how uh, we progress. So 
So we're just waiting for the game to boot up. Usually when you run um, when you run a game in Unity for the first time from startup, it's a little slow to start up. Hey, Light, good to see you. Great to see you. Let's see, Supico6073. Um, love seeing the... I'm trying to get caught up for the chat. How do you, how do you make it... Hey, Tim Allen, good to see you. The chat is showing, like the chat, the chat up there is, it won't let me scroll up. Here, here, I'll just do this. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get caught up with the chat. Okay, hold on. So let me go ahead and I'll stick that in there. Uh, maximize on play. I'll just go ahead and pause it and unpause it. That should fill up here. Okay. Oh, I will get caught up with the chat. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have to scroll this window for the chat. That makes sense now. I was scrolling the wrong window. That totally makes sense. Okay, uh, here we go. I wanted little fireflies also as well, along with, as you can see, like the, you know, like a, like a Latin bug. Okay. So the enemies have a range which they can see. And it's going to be a little bit jittery. Um, that's just how Unity is in um, testing mode. Uh, let's see here. And so it didn't boot in, so I need to figure out why it didn't do that. So let me see what Unity uh, is doing here. So let's go ahead and find out. Um, oh, right. Okay, hold on. So there's there a problem, there's something I needed to fix in, in one of the other, um, in my editor, for my trait editor, uh, which I'm aware of, I, I forgot about it, but there's an error in my um, trait editor, I just need to fix one thing, um, but that uh, caused it to crash there. Rambling, you want a Breath of Thunder for Virtual Boy? So I, I've had the development environment installed for Virtual Boy for a while, and unfortunately I haven't had time outside of work um, to work on that. So let's go ahead and see. Uh, we'll just have to fix this. Refresh equipment labels. Oh, light. Okay, let me get your code. Oh, okay. That is E L G K D V -E L G K D. All right, and this is. L H C A A. I hope you guys enjoy the the story. I did a lot of story writing for Wood as well. So let me see if we can just quickly sort this out here. So what did Unity did Unity want? What did Unity say? It said our um, our index is out of range. Okay. Remind me again which which one? Just remind me here. Refresh equipment labels, core, equipment types, I. See, here's here's where I went wrong. It's it's asking for the ma the maximum length of something else, or the current length of something else. Copy and pasta that in there. Um, I have to be really careful uh, with my logging messages, because when I'm having an issue where something is not working correctly, um, sometimes I'll put like, a, a cuss word in there. Um, but I, I swear to you it works. I swear to you. Like, you know that something should work. It's not working. I'll put a debug.log in there, and I'll just drop the F word in there, you know, and I won't change anything else in the code, and suddenly it'll work. So, that's just how it is. I've accepted that sometimes you got to drop a couple F-bombs in the code, and then it'll work, you know? And that's what professional game development is. <laughs> Let me get caught up with the chat. I think I might be getting lost a little bit. I better get caught up here. Did I miss anyone else's? Um, did I miss anyone else's? If I missed your link code, please let me know. Okay, so we might have another compilation error. Again, it's related to the editor window. So let's go ahead and figure out this one again. It's going to be the same thing. I put the wrong thing in there. Yeah, I put the wrong thing.
Oh, there's there's a mismatch. So what's happening is this is it's refreshing the elemental data for uh, a combatant. Let's see for the elements, combatant elements uh, in elemental offense. Right, it's resetting the data from that. What I'm actually going to do, I think it's stuck from earlier. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and save that. I'm just going to close and reopen Unity again at this point since it seems to have gotten caught on something. Hey, Swifty Ramblings, great. Okay, I'm gonna do your code next. And I will get caught up with the chat. I can hear my own audio. VQJ VQ. VQJ VQ. I feel like I'm looking at an eye test when I see your link code. VQJ VQ. ZMC ET. Okay, great. The other day we were talking about dentists in the Discord server. We were sort of like. I mean, why do we try so hard to impress the dentist? Um, and I kind of likened it to like a distant father. You know, like we're, we always try to to impress them. Um, Mason Pucci would love to see an enemy encounter somewhere. This looks great. Hey, thanks. Uh, I'm working on it. This is funny um, because yesterday uh, this was working fine. So let me see what the deal is here. Let's see if we can figure it out together. It's happening from resetting the uh, elemental data still. E.E. E. Franking, is your first VCS game going to be Gorgeous Sword, Long Heart, Justice? Yeah, um, that will be the first one, and then it will be followed by um, a Sweet Abominations, which will be a multiplayer um, uh, arena fighter, uh, local. Okay, so this is going on here, and unfortunately, um, it's it's difficult when you're doing a live stream because your attention's really split. So, um, I am going to I'm just going to comment this out and then see if it lets lets it run, uh, and I'll fix it later because. Uh, it's difficult. When when you're live streaming, when you're on, on air, your brain has to focus on not being really boring. So let's see. I I'm not I can I'm barely paying attention here. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna turn that off. There's a lot going on here in terms of the code. There's so much. Like you could the whole point of this kind of um, system that I created for battles is a lot of it RPG should come down to the preparation ahead of time, you know. If it's a moment-to-moment -moment decision sort of thing, that's only a small portion of the appeal of an RPG. I think a, a huge amount of the appeal would be um, preparing ahead of time, you kind of have information about where you're going, you set up your party members, and then it's cathartic when it pays off, your strategy pays off, and you get to, um, you know, basically kick some butt uh, because you planned ahead. So let's see if Unity... Um, no. This is embarrassing me in front of my internet friends. Okay, so there's, this isn't, okay, this is, there's actually nothing wrong here. What's going wrong, I think, is with the core here. I have two cores in here. Check here. Let me make sure this is the right one. Yeah, it's got that. Okay, so I just need to check my elements and make sure I have my elements. Yeah, my elements are in there. It is complaining about the elements. Uh, let's see. We just need to make sure all of our uh, information is correct here. So it may have been problematic that we had multiple uh, core objects in there. That may have been causing the issue. 
I'm just going to open these, make sure everything is okay. These are all the equipment types. Okay, action types. This should do it. It is embarrassing in front of my internet friends. Um, and your battle conditions here. This is the database that stores all of the information. This is how objects are able to access all of the information. Is the core always exists, and when any any object, if the battle system, if an enemy needs to access information, they ask the core, and the core says, "Yo, man, I got you. Here's your information." Um, okay, yeah, we'll run it again because those errors shouldn't be happening. And of course, when you when you try to show your internet friends stuff, of course your uh, whatever you're doing is not going to work properly. Uh, his code Pelican I guess it reminds me of the things you Google you do where you type random letters to confirm you're a real person. I had an existential crisis the other day. It's working now. It was the two cores that was causing the problem. I had an existential crisis because, um, and I wanted to take a photo of it, but I was having I, it gave me like almost gave me a meltdown was uh, this website I was registering for something and it says um, prove you're human and there was nothing to click the window came up it said prove you are human and it was a blank white window and for like five minutes I thought I was going insane I was like oh god what is happening right now I have no way to prove I'm a human and I, I genuinely was sort of freaking out a little bit going I don't I don't know where technology is now, if there's no way for me to prove I'm a human. Um, so I closed the window and I refreshed it and then it, it came up with you know, like a capture code. But boy, that was weird. <laughs> it was really weird. Okay, so you can't see the menu right now. Um, I know that it starts on attack. If I press the space button, um, let's see here, where have I, where am I? Oh, is it V? Yeah, it's V is the okay button. If I press the V button, uh, I know that it's going to target um, the enemy. You can attack yourself, your party members. Um, so the, the battle system takes into account being able to hit um, other uh, yourself or your teammate or whatnot. So we'll go ahead and um, just attack them. Again, I don't have any weapons modeled, so all the characters don't have weapons equipped. They just have, if you don't have a weapon, you do a little punch. I, think, I, I really like that the enemies do like a little, a cute little hop when they turn around and get back to the little spot. So the way that my RPG framework uh, works is uh, if I click the tick box, then I can have it so the characters don't return to their spot. And that would make it like a more free roam looking battle system to where, you know, the characters run around and they go everywhere. But, you know, I don't want that for Breath of Thunder. I want this to go classic. So here's the UI elements for the end of battle. I don't have, I didn't render out the um, the portraits yet, but it shows you how much level, uh, how close they are to leveling up. Um, you got EXP. If you got any battle uh, items from the battle, they would show up here with the quantities as well. Again, this came from the 3DS game. So let's go ahead now and um, see if we can get the battle system UI to show up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it again and I need to remember to uncomment that code because I just destroyed some of the logic uh, in my game. I'll do that later. What I'm going to do is boot up the battle again, and this time I'm going to find the canvas which stores the on-screen uh, UI elements, and then I'm just going to uh, pinpoint that, and I'm going to see if I can bring that on into um, the main camera. I have two cameras that exist the bottom screen and top screen because again this came from the 3DS so I want to not maximize this on play now the music's a little creepy isn't it this comes from Silver Falls Ruby River which was on the 3DS okay so what we need now that should be clear on play because that error is gone now okay and we need to go to our battle system which should be should be at the bottom here this, this is funny, this is so, um, there are so many, I'm looking at this framework and there's so many scars from when it was made for the 3DS. I call them 3DS scars and I, I did so much work um, because Unity for 3DS was so broken that I kept employing one uh, solution after another and I kept re-engineering all my games to avoid how broken Unity 3DS was and I see a lot of the scars 
in here, and I need to go through the whole engine, and I need to remove that stuff, um, and I, I need to optimize it for modern consoles. So I'm going to look at the bottom canvas here, and I'm just going to see if I can find it. This says main stats, okay? I'm going to press the F key. You can see that the world actually still keeps running, um, and the battles are actually occurring up here. You know, I've, I've pulled the curtain back, you guys can now see. So things can still happen in the, in the actual map. You can see what's going on here. Uh, oh, sorry. If, if I'm if I'm missing the chat, I'm really sorry about that. I'll I'll, I'll get caught up in just a moment. I just I want to show you what I what I promised to show you. So, um, yeah, I'm aiming for the story mode to be around 20 hours, and of course, there's going to be a lot of stuff that you can do outside of that that should help it. Um, if you want to take your time and and explore the game and find heaps of extra, um, you know, cool weapons and abilities. So, let me find out what's going on here. This is screen overlay. It says display 2. If I change this to display 1, let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see that we now have our stats being displayed, but they are on top of everything. Let's just go ahead and try and play a little bit of the battle system and see what happens now that we can see our UI. And again, this is stuff that I don't want to rush. This is stuff that it absolutely matters getting this right. You can see it currently doesn't stretch, right? Uh, it does not fill the screen. I have a canvas scaler here. Let's go ahead and enable that. The reason why I had it disabled is because that has a performance overhead and on the 3DS it would cause significant memory leaks. It would crash you in the middle of battle. Uh, okay, so you can see that I, this now thinks that it's displaying it's set up to be on the second screen of a 3DS. Defend. Ow. Ow. And my cursor is also not displaying on the right spot as well, you see. So normally you would see a cursor on those, which means I need to redefine that. But you can see, at least you can see, okay, so it's Hero's turn. Hero's going to run up and punch that guy in the head. Uh, let's see, now it's Strike's turn. Uh, let's see. I defended, right. So it does say the stat, uh, or the, the thing. So when your character defends it, did you see that? So if I... Oh, see, it says defend there, so you know that the character has entered an, um, a specific state. Um, you can see I don't have a character on the fifth slot, and this engine I originally designed it for a four-member party, um, but for Breath of Thunder I'm extending that to five. Uh, but I need to just put the logic in, if you look up there. I haven't put the logic in for the fifth character, uh, and so it's just drawing the default values um, that are programmed in just by default. So once I finish the logic, then that will be blank. Uh, and that's something that, would, you know, when I get to it, it'll take a couple minutes. So what we're going to do now is we're, we're just going to have to find a way to fit all of that onto the screen here. Punch him in the head. Hey, Nullbite! Uh, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out. Mastercar77, good to see you. Hello, I see CD, ST, good to see you. Uh, though, okay, the Dreamcast version will be in 2D or 3D? It depends. I know that I can make it in 2D uh, without any issues, but here's this is my personal philosophy is you should always try to do the most that you can and the best that you can. And I know that Dreamcast Homebrew has a very developed scene. Um, you can do 3D um, with Dreamcast Homebrew, but I need to weigh up how long it's going to take to make the game in 3D. It will take significantly more effort and time to make it in 3D. Uh, and that's because there's a lot of animation logic. You have to control all of the animation logic for the characters. Modeling is not the problem. It's the time spent with the animation logic. Um, I do not yet know what the tools are like for building an environment uh, in 3D for the Dreamcast. And so that's why I'm right now I'm only targeting a Dreamcast for a 2D version because I know that I can do it. I'm 100% certain I can do it without any issues. If I say that I'm going to do the Dreamcast version in 3D, there will be issues because I do not have experience um, with creating a 3D environment and handling 3D animations on the Dreamcast. I would do more research into that first, 
and I would spend about a week seeing if I can create a workflow that would allow me to very quickly make the game in 3D. If I can make it happen, I would like to make this on Dreamcast in 3D, but it really comes down to uh, the tools that are available to me. 7th Gen HD, your HD now, what a nice looking game. <laughs> uh, okay, what time is it in Australia? It's 12, 12 p.m. Okay, I will get caught up with the chat. I think I may have missed some people, and if if you're missing, if you didn't get your code linker response yet, please let me know. Okay, I'm gonna, I don't, I'm gonna get caught up with the chat. Uh, I have a dentist that doesn't give me crap. Went to one close to me, and he gave me crap, so I now try 45 minutes away. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just, uh, maybe they hate you. <laughs> maybe your de that dentist hates, just hates you. Um. Loic Lo 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 CD CST. Good morning. Uh, your Kickstarter project looks interesting, but can you tell me how many hours it will take to finish your game and the game um, be as long on all machines? Um, right, so on platform to platform, it's probably going to vary. Every version of the game will have its own quirks. Like, for example, I know the DS. Um, the PSP and Game Boy versions, you know, if I did them, the, the funding's so high, you know, um, that they they would play faster. Um, there, there'd be a, a couple less mechanics in the Game Boy and the DS version, and the reason being is that I want to be able to fit the game on a Game Boy cartridge. Oh, oops. And I know that the more mechanical complexity you have that takes up coding, um, and I have experience with deploying ROMs. I, I've, in my own studio here, I am set up to manufacture uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advanced ROMs. I can make the actual ROMs, but what I don't have experience with is the box art in getting it manufactured. Uh, and so I would need to uh, collaborate with the community so I can learn uh, how to do that. Um, and so there will, the games will probably be a, a, a little shorter on the DS and the Game Boy because I want the game to be able to fit on cartridges. On the DS, it, I would make it a little shorter um, because I'm not f yet fully aware of the limitations of if I put too much stuff in this, will it break? I haven't reached a point on the DS for that yet, but I need to take into account that it is possible that I put too much stuff in the DS version and it's going to break. So I'm going to be very careful when it comes to that. On the PSP, look, I don't want to start a, I don't want to start a platform war here. I am just going to say that the PSP is way stronger than the DS. Um, in terms of content, I don't think that there will be a limit when I make the PSP version. But there are glitches with the engine I'm using for the PSP. Sometimes um, I'll put in a track of music and it just won't play it. So I'm going to have to figure out um, a solution for that. But that's a pretty small, you know, it's a pretty small trade-off. Uh, I can make the PSP version very fast. Um, so I'm using, uh, you can use Game Maker 8.1, which was meant to make computer, you know, PC games. Um, people have created a solution to where you can use Game Maker 8.1 and deploy your game onto the Vita, but you have to take into account the restrictions of the Vita. I mean, not the, I'm saying the PSP. You can use Game Maker 8.1 for the PSP, uh, but you have to take into account the constraints of the PSP. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, uh, Jose, I think all the main console versions are going to be the same. So you can see that this is um, on Steam, Atari VCS, and. Um, Nintendo Switch will use this version of the game. This is what I call the core version of the game. And then the other versions of the game, here's how pe people are, are wondering how I'm going to be able to develop the other versions of the game so quickly. And the reason I'll be able to develop so quickly is I'm creating this game knowing for a fact that I will probably bring it to other platforms. So the character design, I had someone comment on um, YouTube and they complained about the character designs um, looking cheap. Um, because they all use the same parts. But I've approached this character design from the design philosophy of the 90s, is that all you had access to in the 90s were pixels. All the characters have to use the exact same pixels. The pixels are always the exact shape. You have very limited space in terms of visual information for pixels. And so what really is important is the shape of 
those pixels in terms of the arrangement and the color. So that is how I approach the design of these characters. It gets the point across. You understand the characters by looking at them. You can tell which character is which. I could spend hundreds of hours creating unique body parts and it would not, what difference would it make? What difference would it make if I spent 200 hours crafting a whole different torso for this guy from scratch when it wouldn't make a difference? What benefit would it add if I spent 200 hours making a whole other torso again? And also to add to that fact, they aren't actually using the exact same um, geometry. They're, they're using different geometry. Um, and so I don't, I don't super understand um, some of the, the uh, complaints and criticism that I've got. Um, and it's things like the NPCs, there's a bunch of different template pieces for the NPCs, um, but there's also a bunch of different template pieces. They are using them, but they're different colors and it's different arrangements. The most important thing when it comes to game development is not to show off how much you can do. It's about expression. Are you effectively expressing what you are trying to communicate? Trying to show off how much you can do, how much detail you can pack into something, does not result in a better product. It results in a messy product if you're just trying to show off how much you can do. Um, what's so important is expression and expressing something. And um, for me, I feel that these characters express what they are trying to show. They are distinct, you can tell them apart, you get a feel for who they are and what they are. Uh, let me catch up with the chat here. Needs better shader. Uh, Frost Frost Hey, thanks for coming to hang out. So we'll, we'll we'll start it. We'll close it up, and then we'll see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my battle system, and I'm going to get uh, the UI to uh, just just uh, just work, to show up and work. Um, I even saw someone say it reminded them of Animal Crossing. That's a huge compliment. Oh yeah, absolutely. Animal Crossing is gorgeous. Oh man. Something about that. Here's the thing. I have a self-ban on Animal Crossing. Obviously I've played a bit of Animal Crossing um, because that thing is just, it's right down my alley. Uh, I have a self-ban on that kind of game because I will play it too much. Um, I will put in way too many hours and uh, I'm at a stage in my life where I have to spend uh, all of my time developing these games. They require so much effort and time that if I were to enjoy the games that I want to enjoy, I wouldn't be able to get any games done. So that's also part of my secret on how I'm able to get so much work done, is I banned myself from playing the games that I really want to play. Oh, this is awful. I'm going to open up to you guys. I'm only, I'm only buying games and playing games right now that I know I'm not going to enjoy that much. I know that sounds so bad. Um, like, I, I go on the eShop and I'll buy a game that I look at it and I think, I'm not, I don't think I would enjoy that. And I buy those games. So at least I'm, I'm contributing to an independent developer. Um, and I know that it's a break, it's a short break from work. And I know that I'm not going to end up, you know, putting 20 hours into the game. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but that allows me to not spend too much time playing games. Because it's just the nature of my work. I'm a solo developer. You have to put in massive hours to get this stuff done. So let me go ahead and find my battle system. Actually, a battle is too vague. I'm going to put in thunder, and it should be, it should be right at the top here. Actually, if I type in core, there we go. Uh, battle system core. Breath of thunder, uh, battle system core. The, the stream is like blocking the part of the screen that I really need. So we identified earlier, and again, if you're a Silver Falls player, please put your uh, link code down in there. We are distributing a new playable character for Guardians and Metal Extermination. So we found this earlier, right? Main stats. So the problem with this guy is he was drawing on canvas on display one. So let's go ahead and bring that over to display one. Uh, great, now we can see that it will display there. We need to make sure that our, our other canvases are also drawing to the right uh, screen space camera. That probably shouldn't be like that. I'm gonna have to have a look at that. Um, that should be overlay, not screen space. And again, the reason being it is, it is like this is because I originally developed this framework for the 3DS, and it took me years to understand how broken memory leakage was on the 3DS. So I could not make this RPG 
or any RPG. I had some very far along in development, and I, I lost a lot of time because I could not um, get the memory leakage on the 3DS to work. Okay, so what do we have here? The camera battle system. So I have two cameras, battle actors, the main stats. But the cursor is not showing up, so we need to figure out where the cursor is. Now I create... Oh, remember, we have to turn the canvas scaler on. So, um... I create a separate canvas for the cursor. And if you're using Unity, this is important as well. Do not put all of your things in one canvas, because when you change one thing, if you change one piece of text, Unity will flag everything in that canvas. It'll mark it as dirty, which means it needs to be updated. And if you do that, it causes a significant performance overhead. You're going to get a massive hiccup. So if you have a UI where everything is stored on one canvas and you have like an animated element, like the color on a cursor keeps changing or the cursor moves in and out, everything on that UI is going to be flagged as dirty. It's going to incur a performance overhead and Unity does actually have memory leakage on canvases. So I always split things up. I put my cursors, anything that's animated, I put it on its own canvas. Uh, it's frustrating that that is how it works, but that's just how it works, man. Um, you have to figure out the strengths and weaknesses of every single development environment, every single engine you're using, and that's something that just takes time. Um, but it's something I've, I've gotten good at when it comes to Unity, because I'm not bragging, right? I'm just saying it's because I've developed on Unity 3DS for so long, and everything is so broken on that, that I've just gotten good at identifying what's broken in Unity, and then... Um, drawing a big old circle around it and then avoiding using all of the things that are broken. That's just that's just how it is. But any game development is like that. Every engine has its quirks, you know. So this was blocking our view. Let me go ahead, I'll press F. I'll find that. And it's not bound to any particular part of the screen. If we grab that, we can sort of move that oh, maybe I want to move that as well. So the party but the party actions right. Oh Hello, we're leaving that behind. Why are we leaving that behind, huh? It's funny that that doesn't, that doesn't, does that make sense to you guys? What's up with that? So here's a good way to figure out what's going on, right? We'll hide that. And I've, I've developed so much as a developer, I've learned a lot, you know, this, Game development is always a process of learning. You should always be improving. You should always be learning more. I've learned so much creating the Silver Falls games um, that I just need to go through this entire engine um, and optimize and, and implement the things that I've learned. I need to make sure that this, this framework is now good enough to where I can use it for the next however many years to make RPGs. It's, it's my favorite genre. I just want to make a bunch of RPGs. So we need to figure out what the deal is. That doesn't really make so much sense to me, right? If we grab main stats, we grab the whole thing. Right. But if we grab this, that doesn't... What's the deal? This is embarrassing me in front of my internet friends is what it's doing. This is bizarre, guys, right? Oh, oh, I'm being so ridiculous right now. It's this. Okay, so the reason I fell for that, the reason I was getting it wrong, is because that's not how I would have done it these days. I'm, I've learned a lot more as a developer. I would not have put that, um, that sprite in there and then make everything a child. That, that's why I was getting confused. The old me would have done that because I, I spent years making this framework. The old me would have done that, the modern me, um, not so much. Right. And this is huge, by the way. This is massive. So what I'm going to do now is shrink this down. Uh, and I think a more sort of modern situation, we would just go, sort of drop it in the corner. It may be a little too small now, so we'll see. And again, people have commented on um, the font. Um, totally. I totally agree with you guys. The font is a little hard to parse, uh, so I will be um, changing the font. I haven't had time to pick something different yet. This is the font that I used on my previous project that was going to be a 3DS RPG. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. 
I'll take my primary actions. Uh, and we'll go ahead and just like put that there, right? Something something like that. I'll, I'll come back and make this with more precision later on, you know. Um, so if, if we just take this, like this is pretty simple right now. Um, oh, he went inside my monster. This is very simple, right? I just made some simple changes. We'll hit apply. Let's go ahead and run it and let's see if it sh uh, performs the way that we expect it to. And then I will get caught up on the chat very soon here. I'm sorry if I've missed your code linker code. I'll, I'll get back to it very quickly. Thoughts, thoughts on 3D platformers? I'm a huge 3D platformer fan. I would love to make a 3D platformer. Uh, so I've been investigating um, um, the homebrew solutions for the N64. There is, um, I'm not going to use official Nintendo tools. Again, I am a registered developer with Nintendo, so I need to avoid, you know, um, if their software was illegally leaked online, I'm not going to be using that. But there is an open source, fully homebrew version. Uh, and so here we are. Here we, let me get let me get myself out of the way. I'm in the way here. So you can see we it didn't take that long to fix the UI and put it on screen, but it's still a matter of just because it's there doesn't mean it's good. It's it's too big and clunky. It's taking up too much of the space, which means um, the battle camera instructions. These animations are hard coded in. I designed the animations without this UI in mind. I designed the animations f knowing that the UI elements were gonna be on the bottom screen of the 3DS. So it's taking up too much space now. So what I need to do is uh, redo all of the camera animations so that it takes into account that the UI is going to be taking up this fair amount. What do you, I'll ask for you guys. I mean, this is a collaborative process. We're all gamers. I'm making this game for you guys. What do you think of this spot here? Do you guys wanna try something else? Comment, let me know. Um, in the chat, we let's move it around, and we'll try a couple different things. We'll spitball it. This will feel like we're all sitting. I, here's the vibe that I want. You know, with my community, I want you guys to feel like we're sitting at a Denny's at 2 a.m. drinking coffee, and I've gotten food poisoning from the mystery meat bowl at Denny's, uh, and I want to look cool, so I'm pretending that I didn't get food poisoning. Um, and we're all just sitting at a Denny's, and we're spitballing, we're spitballing ideas for a game. You know, that's that's kind of what I want the community to feel like. All right, I'm, I'm going to get caught up on the chat here, guys. Oh, let's see. Okay, so the Saturn the Saturn has an engine called the Joe engine, and I'm, I'm going to make sure I give credit to the guy that created it. Is it Johannes Fetz or something? Um, I, don't, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but I'm going to bring it up uh, because it's quite, it's quite a mature solution. And being able to make a game for the Saturn and make it good, I cannot take credit for that. That credit should be given to um, Johannes Fetz. Um, and the reason why people can make uh, homebrew for the Saturn, and the reason why I even considered it, was because this guy made an engine that is great. It's brilliant. Um, and I don't want to take credit for saying, I made this RPG on the Saturn, look how great I am. I didn't actually do that much. This guy did all the hard work. You can download and try his engine right now, and you can deploy your own ROM onto the Saturn. And that's because this guy did all of the hard work. He's incredible, uh, and I'm using the Joe engine. I was able to figure out how to use his engine very quickly, and I, I can tell just from using a little bit of it that I can make a game very quickly and very efficiently using his game engine. So it's not that, ooh, look at what a, a great game developer I am. I'm, I'm just making a video game. This guy did all the hard work, and he's sharing that with all of us so that we can make Saturn games. So, um, you know, this guy deserves the credit, Johannes Fetz. Totally awesome dude. He created the Joe engine for the Sega Saturn, and that's why I even considered it. It only took me a couple minutes to deploy, to load my pre-rendered graphics, to put a sprite in there. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do, what I'm seeing here, is the health, you know, stuff it's now conflicting with the end of battle window. Um, and I'm going to shrink this down. I'm going to shrink that down so it looks more elegant. Uh, because it's, it's so big and chunky, isn't it? All right. Uh, 
uh, the Manor music from White and Sides Umbra. Are there any are there any White and Sides Umbra uh, fans players in here that have enjoyed White and Sides Umbra? And again, let me know if the music's too loud. It's hard for me to tell. I'm looking at my levels here on screen, and it's just a little hard for me to tell. You know. So I just want to identify this window real quick. I'm I'm really bad at getting caught up with the chat. I'm so bad. So I click on that, I press the F key. That'll let me find what the deal is here. Okay, I got my canvas pointer. Uh, party management, canvas pointer. It should be in the battle system. I should, if I go to my battle system, I'll see it. Okay, that's the camera, top canvas. Okay, I'll just check the logic here. I'll disable that. If that disappears, then we know it's in there. Okay, great. Let me just go ahead and find that guy, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna arbitrarily scale it down until I think it looks better. This is battle end generic, and that's because my RPG framework takes into account that I I can implement different versions of a battle end screen. The whole RPG framework I've built is designed to be modular, so it doesn't just produce the exact same RPG again and again. I can create different uh, components and just swap them in, and it can be a totally different game. So let's go ahead and shrink that down. I think that's that's like a little more elegant, isn't it? So I'm gonna just I'm gonna look at that. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh you know what? Obviously I'm going to hide that right the the health and all that stuff later. Um, it's a little more elegant. I'll find a more elegant way to design this. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'll... Let's change our character specs. We'll go to our character stats, we'll put some stuff into their action menu, and then we'll see it work in real time. So let's go ahead and copy this first, right? Let's just make that a little more elegant. Um... Okay, I'll get back to my battle system, which is here. Drop that on up in there. Battle system core. Um, and it was on. A battle engineering. There it is. I copied the transform, so I'm just going to right click and paste, and then that will put it back um, to. I can't see. I can't see. Let's go ahead and uh, paste component values. This is great. Okay, so now it's the same as when it was before, and let's go ahead and give our characters just some cool moves, and then we'll try them out during battle. Okay. Um, we'll hit apply. Okay. Get rid of the battle system corner. We can delete that. So let's go to let's go to. Um, I'm kind of like a strike. I, I really like strike. I just. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, in breath of the breath of fire. Uh, is one of my favorite games of all time. I, it's it's hard to get people who haven't played it in the past. It's hard to get them interested because it's it's a brutal game. Um, it's archaic and it doesn't it doesn't feel great um, if you're coming from modern games. Uh, but if you grew up with it, you know you you have more tolerance for it. Um, but Bo was the coolest character to me. Uh, I think in Japanese his name is Gilliam. Um, but that was the first time I'd seen that sort of um, anthropomorphic animal character. And this guy, like, you look at his, his portrait art, you look at, like, the concept art in the manual, like, this guy is like a wolf dude. This guy has attitude. This guy's awesome, you know? He's shooting arrows and... Oh, man, what a cool dude. Um, and so, you know, um, I need to make sure that I don't accidentally copy something because I think it's the coolest thing in the world. It's really easy for that to happen if you just, like... Oh man, you love this thing and you want to make something like it. It's so easy to accidentally copy that. So that's something that I, I, I really actively put thought process into. And obviously when I was making this, I was thinking like, Oh, I want to make a character like Bo from Breath of Fire 1 because that dude was so cool. Um, let's go ahead, uh, let's get... Strike. Let's go ahead and give... I'm going to replace his normal attack with attack times 4. Um, attack times 4. And instead of defend, I'll give him, like, a double repost. Oh, wait, let me think. Oh, no, that, that triggers from a counterattack. Never mind. Um, traits. Let's give him a trait, you know. What do we got here? You can have things that, like, um, that allow you to counterattack. Um, so let me look at the traits. We have arrogant, bad-tempered, blind fury, competitive. Oh, hemophiliac. 
So this previous RPG I was working on, your character can enter a bleed state where they're constantly losing health. Um, and if they had the trait hemophiliac, if they entered the bleed state, they would also automatically gain the fear state. Uh, and that would reduce their stats. And so this was actually a negative trait. So traits are not always positive, they can also be negative as well. I think loudmouth prevents you from being muted, so uh, being a loudmouth if you were a magic caster was a very good thing. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of... Venomous, I think, it adds... Um, it adds poison to your attack, maybe? I don't know, I, I'd have to look at these again. Um, anyway, let's... Let's just go ahead and add other moves. Okay, I'm going to save the character. And again, I don't have um, battle animations ready here. So, uh, let's go to Hero. We gave Strike a cool move. Uh, let's see here. Actions. Actions. Portable. Again, you can, you can define the level at which they learn these. Let's just give them something cool. What do we got? Poison Reprisal. Oh, that's sick. I forgot I put it put that in there. Poison Reprisal is a counterattack, and I think it can poison the enemies. A, a quick, m measly counterattack, which inflicts... Blind. Oh, I had a couple different reprisals. I didn't update the description, but I remember now in my previous project, there were different kinds of counterattacks that were weaker, but the counterattack inflicted different uh, status ailments. So you had one, you can give them static, you could give them blind, you could give them poison, and that's something that I'm going to implement in Breath of Thunder as well, and that's going to be through your, your equipment. So you equip your characters, and it will give them like a poison counterattack. You can give them a blind counterattack. Um, so, and that's the kind of stuff I love in RPGs. Just like you sort of see this system open up, and it unfolds more and more, and you kind of think like, look at all the cool stuff that I could do. Um, let's see here. So let's. Um, those are the standard the skills mechanic. I'm. I'm just gonna go to like. Let's go to beast skill. What's in there? Charge, tackle, double. Let's just give them double claw. You know what? Cluck about uh, for a uh, chicken. That's hard. <laughs> I don't know what Giga Gore is. I'm kind of looking at this stuff and I forgot I put that in there. Let's just give them Giga Gore. <laughs> All right, save the character. Oh, fake injury. Fake injury. Um, I think that makes the enemies target you multiple targets of alert. Interesting. Okay. Alright. Um, who else do we have in our party? We have Sakana. Or Sakana, if you want. we just give him a different ability. Actions uh, earnable by level. Shadow Trick. I don't know what... I don't remember what Shadow Trick is. I'm just going to drag it into there and see. Toughen up. Venom Army? Whoa, what the heck is Venom Armor? That sounds sick. I forgot what it is. Um, again, this is from an RPG that I was making years ago. Um, and I was I was genuinely hoping and believing that Unity would fix the memory leaks. So unfortunately I didn't get to finish the, that game for the 3DS. Okay, so let's go ahead and maximize on plight. Let's see... Did I, did I click that? I better click that just in case I didn't click it before. Um, let's go ahead and maximize on play. Envy! Oh, great! I better I better do your code linker. So enemies can walk. Let, you know what? Let's do next. I'll show you how I make the enemies walk around. We'll put them on a walking path. We'll do that next. Let me go ahead and generate Envy's uh, code for Wood Wheeler for Solar Falls. Okay, Envy, CBXGA, CBXGA, okay, I, I will get caught up with the chat now, JLRWX, did I do, I didn't write that on the type computer, uh, JLRWX, that, that coast I just posted, posted is for um, Envy. Very RPG-like um, GUI. Okay, but, um, let's see. 
Matthew Williams, I think it's funny that you buy games you hate. It's like, I hate this RPG 10 out of 10. Look, it's like, it's not that I hate them, it's just that I know that they're not the kind of thing that I'm that interested in, you know? Um, I take it as a, a, a new view record for streaming. Um, uh, Ramblin, yeah, that's his whole idea. He's trying to call back to the RPGs of the past because he's found modern RPGs really don't match what he's looking for. Yeah, that's right. Like, I'm not saying like, oh, I hate modern RPGs and they're bad. It's just that the developers are focusing on things that I, I'm i not looking for. You know, they're fo focusing on like so much mechanical complexity, you know, and look at these flashy visuals and um, I, I just want this adventure. I want to feel like I'm going on an adventure. Uh, I'm setting out to see the world and I'm making friends with a bunch of weirdos who are like weird animal hybrid people that they're also weird but they also want to go on, a, on an adventure and see the world. That's what I want in an RPG. Um, and I think if if I if I can provide that and give something really fun to people, I think that's something that people will really remember that they used to really like. You know, they used to really like games that just focused on just an adventure because that's what so many games um, in the 90s were like, is I felt like the, the developers were focusing on just providing the experience of going on an adventure. So that's what I want to focus on with this. Um, Unity GUI is so inefficient. Why? I, you see people just complain about it, and it's people are so justified in the UI for Unity. Um, to be honest, the character models kind of look like the pre-rendered CGI models you used to see in RPGs all the time, so yeah. Yeah, and that's what I'm going for, is I'm not copying any particular style, but I want to evoke that sense of of that era of games, you know? So, I'm in the way of my menu here, and I I can't see what I'm doing. What? You know what, his ability, oh, I know what, the ability that I gave him wasn't meant to show up um, on its own, it was meant to show up in a sub menu. So we're probably going to have to go and fix that now. So what I'll do now is I'll show you guys what it looks like to give the enemy instructions so he can walk around. And we'll just fix Hero's thing real quick because I didn't get to didn't get to see the effect of that. Let's go to actions, learnable. So as you level up, you can see that you can give your characters traits as well. Double claw. That's a monster move. Duh. Hello. Hello, Megan. That is such an obscure deep cut. No one's gonna know what I'm talking about. Just give me that. Is it because, let me see, I think this says, it needs a, ch like a, you know what, there's a tick box that says like it's a standard action, and a standard action means that it can show up on the menu. So just, I'll leave that there, uh, go back to hero. Action's loaded by level. Attack Igor and item. I'm going to go ahead and save. So it's possible that Shadow Trick may not even show up as well. We'll save it. Okay, so I'll show you guys how I tell a character to move around. Okay, so let's say that I want this enemy to roam. This is what we would refer to as a roaming enemy, right? Let's go ahead and click on that guy. You can see his. Uh, line of sight. If you enter that line of sight, that's just a collision box. If you touch that collision box, that's going to activate the random encounter. Well, it's not. I need to stop calling it a random encounter. It's not a random encounter at all. So I have a script that uh, integrates with all my other stuff. You can have it follow an object. Uh, if I enable that, it would just follow the player nonstop. I'm in my own way. This is so deep and philosophical that I'm in my own way. Okay. I mean, we're all our own worst enemies at some point in life. Okay. I'm going to click on Add Component, and we'll click on Move. Uh, move Actor Between Positions. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So I, OK. For a second, guys, I'm, I'm going to move myself to the other. Uh, OK, I need, no. uh, I need to move myself to the other side of the screen here. So if you don't mind for a second, I'm just going to... Oh, jeez, whoa, that was so fast. Okay. Right, so I need to have multiple movement steps. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's just give them three. Let's give them three different positions to move to. I'm still in the way. Good gracious. 
I, I got motion sickness just and I'm gonna move a little bit slower this time. Okay. Whew. That's better. You shouldn't move that fast, honestly. Okay, so I already have a bunch of objects in here that I call walk targets. I'm gonna type target in there. I'm just gonna go to my latest one, which is eight. And I will just call this one walk target nine. Okay, I'll go ahead and press F, and I can see that someone someone else is using the walk target eight already. So this is it's just an object. There's nothing in it. I just need the position and transform. What I what I would do, um, and I'll, I will probably do in the future as I'm updating and it, uh, improving this game framework, is I'll have it draw a gizmo. I'll put something in there, and it'll draw a gizmo so I can see on the map where the walk target is. For now, um, it's it's just in this group here, but I will add that later. So we, we want to give him three uh, targets. We'll go uh, one, two, and three. And we'll go over here. Uh, like that. We're going to have him wait. When he gets to the middle one, we'll have him wait. Let's go ahead and click on our chunky little boy. And let me know if the music's too loud. I'm so far behind the chat. Holy smokes, I'm so far. Let me... Um, Bing Bing Wahoo, what kind of PC setup do you advise to use for game development? It really depends on what platform you want to target. Obviously, you're going to need um, stronger PC for the, the stronger platforms, you know, like... Um, and it depends on the games you want to make, but you should always have multiple monitors, at the bare minimum, two monitors. And you want to just make sure that there you have one that's like 24 inches at least, uh, because you're going to if you're doing coding, um, you want the text to be uh, big and clear. But again, it really depends on what you're making, your development environment, and your target platform. So I'm just going. You can give these nicknames, right? Like South, um, you know, Middle. Oops. What have I done? What have I done? I don't know what I've done here. Oh, this is music from um, Three Down Stars. Too much of a vibe, I think. You know what? This is where do we have the? Um, where's waiting for the sun to rise? Sorry if the music's a little too intense. I just booted up the Silver Falls soundtrack. Um, something a little chill. And then this would be the um, north. Oh, you know, we'll have wait. We'll have this one be wait. And those are nicknames that I put in there so that visually I can tell what's going on. North, okay. Now, I want the step target to be. What have I. Hello. Hello. What have I. I just need to double check something here. He already has one. He already has a script there. Of course, it's it's an enemy template. I built it in. I built it into the template. Okay. Well, that's fine. So we'll just enable that. Okay. So we just want to mention the first thing, which is walk target eight. Type target in there. Oh nine. My mistake. He's using walk target number nine. Uh, Sure, he'll he'll use um, walk speed to you don't you know you, you don't want your slow chunky enemies to be too fast otherwise it might be hard to avoid them. We'll leave it at two and then we'll see how fast he goes. Middle, uh, we'll give him a wait. Okay. Target. Okay. Okay. Let's see, walk speed two. You can allow them to run as well. I don't want them to run. So this one, he's not going anywhere, okay? You can have them perform gestures as well. Uh, I want to have him wait, uh, and I will auto progress. He's gonna wait here for six seconds. Too long, you know, we're on stream. You gotta keep things fast, man. Um, north. Okay, so do I have any, do I have any, um, Gundam Wing fans 
in the chat. I'm a big Wonder Gundam Wing guy. That was one of my favorite things. Um, get home from high school, watch uh, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing, Outlaw Star, the good stuff. Um, and there was always that clip of Hiro Yui, one of the Gundam pilots. He has, you know, the Gundam cockpit has like keyboards. And he would do this thing, he was like, ah, he typed on the whole thing like that, like that. Um, and I always dreamed of like, man, one day I want to type like that. But it, it turns out like, in order to be able to do my work effectively, I did actually have to teach myself to type one-handed pretty quickly. And while I can't pilot a Gundam, um, you know, I can type one-handed okay. Um, and that, that just, just allows me to get work done pretty quickly. If I, if I could watch Gundam Wing right now, I would be watching it. Uh, such a big Gundam Wing fan. Okay, so we have that, and then we'll have him wait again. How about that? We'll have him wait. Auto progress. Give him another four seconds, and we'll just say wait. So I have been um, chatting on live stream, so I didn't really fully pay attention. But you have two ways that you can deal with this uh, behavior. You can either loop it, where it goes back to the beginning, or it reverses it. I'm going to reverse it. Let's just go ahead and run the game now and see if this logic works. Again, I really only have paid attention to it. You're more a fan of G Gundam um, and Kyoji and the Dark Gundam. There's Honestly, I think we're a little bit spoiled because there's so many different kinds of Gundam. There's so much Gundam content. Hey, great. Okay, so he's moving, um, but his animation, I think, his animation controller has not been referenced in his logic. So let's go ahead and fix that now. So we have Eventide Actor. Eventide, again, is my framework that I'm creating. And if we have a look, let's see here. We have the Eventide Auditioning. Click it again. That's him. I suspect the animator controller, it's in there. It's in there. So we need to make sure which logic he's using. All right, so this uh, is using the wrong controller. I think that's for battles, right? Um, no, I need, I need to see what I've done wrong here. I think it's missing some logic. Let's go ahead and have a look here. Click in our animator. Okay, you see? the idle animation is selected for walking. That's where I'm missing my logic. So, we'll go ahead and fix that now. Okay, there's a little bit of input delay. I'm not, I'm not bad at using computer. There is a little bit of in, input delay because of the capture card. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna, it's gonna bring me back to uh, my blob here. So I, I need his walking animation. Path, zombie punching, standing, idle, mutant, walking. There we go. So, we'll go ahead and put that logic in there. Reference that. We'll also put that in run as well. So you can see our, our dude wasn't animating, he was standing still, even though his placement on the screen was changing. I hope the music's not too loud, I'm going to lower that. Okay, let's go ahead and run it. There was a Gundam cafe and they closed it. I would have gone to it. Gundams are mechs, Mac and Williams. Yes, they have pilots. I'm such a oh man. I I could watch Gundam all day. So you can see he is animating, but I need to adjust the speed now. Let's go ahead and watch him. Make sure that the instructions that we gave him are being followed. So you can see he is walking to the different points. But he stopped in the middle. Oh ah! I got caught. I got caught. He saw me. He saw me. Okay, so it is basically working. I would just see why I didn't follow through with the whole thing. But yeah. What I do want to do is reduce that walking speed, though. That's way too fast. I'm not going to know this song. Yeah, this is um, Guardians and Metal Exterminators. Let's slow that down by half, why don't we? I will double check his instructions because he didn't go all the way through to the end.
I'm so sorry if I've missed your comment in the chat. This is generally why I try to avoid doing, um, you know, the, the real, um, the real actual work. I try to avoid doing that on stream because it's difficult to concentrate on actual work and also engage on stream. Um, I try to do my best, but, you know, your brain has so much RAM, you know, um, and when you're out of RAM, you, you're, you know, that's what went wrong. He stops after two seconds. Yeah, your brain can handle so much, and then, then you're out of RAM. I heard you can download more RAM. So that last track comes from Guardians and Metal Exterminators. That's the game that we're distributing the um, code linker content for. I, I am getting caught up on the chat, I swear. Hey, Indra G, good to see you. Uh, you have a version KA Shenlong build. Oh, so cool. I had an Epion build um, when I was a kid. Epion's the coolest man. With the tail, he flies past stuff. He's got the tail. The tail does the whippy thing. Shh, that's cool, man. That's cool. I'm going to kill you, Hero Yui, to this random chick he just uh, met. Yeah, man, that was the coolest dude, you know. He was always like, oh, I just want to die. Let me die. And everyone's like, no, the power of friendship. Look at our, look at our boy. Look at our boy. He still stopped after two seconds, so I need to see what the go is with that. Okay, he's going, he's going. He's stopping every two seconds, so we just need to figure out why. Ooh! Look at him! Look at your son! Look at your child! Oh no, he's adorable! I kind of have a weakness for adorable monsters. Look at him go! That's our pal! That's our, that's our little, that's our son! What I thought Gundam was like Transformers or like Battlers experience as pilots. Oh, hey, Silver Sonic, good to see ya. Look at our cute friend. I kind of love him, guys. Man, I can't believe you got to go to the Gundam cafe, cafe too. I want to go to a Pokemon Center. That'd be so cool. Gal King, I haven't seen Gal King. Uh, pseudo him. Hey, good to see ya. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the chat now. Um, Luna S Slayton. Hey, good to see ya. Yeah, I'm not necessarily copying anything in particular, but I'm evoking the spirit of RPGs from the 90s. And e evocation is something that's extremely powerful. The, the ability to evoke something means that you are you are recalling our cultural memory of something. We all have, I mean, you know, if you spent time being alive in the 90s, you have cultural memory. We share that. That's something that we all share. And when you evoke something, you are recalling that cultural memory and you are sharing it with someone. And you can use that evocation to set someone's uh, context. You can set a, a mental context for something. And so by creating this art style, I'm not setting out to copy anything, but I'm using evocation to remind you of RPGs from the 90s like Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, Breath of Fire, Chrono Trigger. I'm evoking the spirit of those games while not copying them. Okay. So next I need to figure out why I can't see my cursor on the bottom screen. And I'm kind of hoping that I... No, I wouldn't have programmed it to be touch screen only. Um, because originally, again, I made this framework for... Um, the 3DS and punch this guy in the head. Oh, you see? The two attacks came out. Remember how we gave him a different move that attacks twice? So he just hit twice there. Um, this is strike. What a strike have. You guys see that? How multiple attacks came out? Remember how we switched strikes uh, abilities? So you can see it took, it took effect. How um, I changed their abilities. I changed it to attack times three, times four, I think. And you can see it happened, whereas different numbers popped out of their heads. Okay, and the we, we moved the UI, so yeah, great. Now what hasn't been implemented on that, so I need to figure out what's going on. I'll show you how my battle system, or how my framework functions anyway. So I'll close that, I'll go to my core here. Um, this is my core, and it allows me to, I can change the universal color of text box windows. Uh, you can see there's a gradient uh, for the windows. Uh, I can change the frame 
for all of the text windows so I can make universal changes to the graphics of the game. Um, I can pick the font, I can override the font. For some reason it's not being implemented right now, so I need to double check my logic. Um, but I can change the font universally, all that, you know. This is, I know this stuff's really boring because it's visually just a bunch of words, you know. It, it's cooler to just show you the stuff happening. But, you know, we're hanging out on stream, we're chatting. I'm going to hang out with you guys on the chat for a while. Did you guys check the mushroom on? Let me, because people have said they, they're having trouble finding the seventh mushroom on, I'm going to double check uh, the camera angle on this one, and I'll, I'll hang out with you guys on the chat. So I'm, I'm not, I'm a little bit out of touch when it comes to um, internet language uh, and the, the slang and, um, you know, the hip young people language. Oh, if you notice, I'm moving a bit faster right now. Uh, I'll, I'll keep testing and adjusting. People have commented they would like the characters to move faster, so I've adjusted that. So you can see right now he's moving, <laughs> he's moving way faster than he was before. Um, but we, we'll see. Um, comment down below in the... Uh, chat, let me know if you think this movement speed is, is now um, what you want, or if you want it to be a little faster still. So just comment, and then I'll make adjustments right now. Elk and Fencer, it was great great to hang out. Thanks for coming to hang out. Thanks for all your support. Um, have a good night. We'll see you. Okay, I'm, I am getting caught up on the chat, I swear. The Gundam Cafe had great food, actually. Nice. Nice. Um, Pseudo, about my game slash Kickstarter, want to check it out in your browser? Or not too hard to put your browser on OBS, or it's just an interruption right now. Put your link. Put your link in there. I'll click on it and we'll look at it. Honestly, taking inspiration from stuff you love is always good. Look at how many franchises started because people loved Akira, or in general anime. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, is it is this the one that you guys have missed? Because the camera makes it hard to see. I see now. I moved that tree. I moved that tree last minute. I think. That's, is that the mushroom on there, or? Yeah, that's, I'm sorry guys, that's my fault. I moved that tree because I was painting the terrain. I moved it last minute. So the last mushroom on is there. Sorry everyone, that is my fault entirely. It's totally my bad. Now people think I've gaslit them into thinking there's, there's all the mushroom on. That was my fault. I moved the tree last minute. I'm just going to grab both these fellows here. Alright. And again, the, the Mushroom Mon... If, if I can make a Dreamcast version, I would like them... Um, mushroom Mon. You can catch them and raise them using the VMU. I have a pocket station. I would. Oh man, I would love to make a pocket station thing. That'd be so cool. Didn't um, does anyone in the chat know if what games did Legend of Mana use the pocket station? I'm kind of feeling like Legend of Mana. I know Final Fantasy VIII um, used pocket station. I'm gonna play some Gaiden. Uh, Silver Falls Gaiden music here. Hey, Wackapon, Wanderer of the Waste. Good to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out. Uh, the soundtrack, the music that we're listening to is soundtrack from the Silver Falls games. I usually put that on in the in the live streams just to have something to listen to. Look at our boy. Look at his look at his adorable. Look at him go. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is something I forgot. I forgot to put hair on this on this NPC. I forgot to put hair on her. I modeled um, a bunch of hair for the female characters that are you know like specifically for them. I accidentally put the bench in her way, so she kind of tries to get around it a little. The music that we're listening to right now is. It's all mandolins. Uh, half of the mandolins that you hear in this recording, I built them myself uh, because I wanted very specific, unique mandolins. Um, things like a, a mando cello, um, a nylon string a mandolin. Um, there are things in here that I, I custom built just for this soundtrack. 
Um, and this track is, is all mandolins. I think there's like six or seven different mandolins in this track. Okay, now you can see the mushroom on here. So that was my fault. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay, but I would like to update uh, this. I am preparing the Vita uh, version of the teaser as well. So I'll have this running on Vita uh, within a couple hours. I have it on my other machine sitting just here. Oh, I'm moving so fast, I'm leaving my party members like a little bit in the dust. You know, when I, when I start out, my acceleration is so fast. Um, see, like I sort of leave them behind a little bit, so I will have to adjust the party member speed. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll just um, gaze long again at a lake. I forgot to put, I forgot to finish um, the collider wall. I'm using a spline system. So if you go to that one spot, you could go into the lake there. Uh, isn't that like a Simpsons? thing where a character walks into the ocean? Is that something that happens? Yeah. Okay, I, I, I'm getting caught up on the chat now. I think my coffee is going so cold. Okay. Hey! Kenny, good to see you. Kenny Shalafo Music, good to see you. I'm sorry I haven't been doing my personal YouTube channel. Work has been, oh man, work's been so brutal. Uh, putting in long hours, I'm running a Kickstarter campaign, but I'm hoping to get back to posting videos on my personal YouTube channel later. Oh, you didn't know you could actually pick up the mushrooms? <laughs> oh, you think, find the mushrooms and count them. Um, old school RPGs had hidden stuff like that, so I thought it was deliberate. Yeah, well, I didn't mean to be a jerk and, like, obscure it totally from view. Uh, the moment when you look at the horizon um, and what you see is character name. <laughs> Hidden Mushroom Mon Vibe Check Failed. Yeah, pretty rough that I, I messed that one up. I really botched that. Uh, great to see you streaming. I missed your uploads. Cool to see your game work. I'm going to get back to, to my uh, personal YouTube channel very soon. Okay, I just realized, did Silver Falls take advantage of Street Pass feature on 3DS? No. I had my hands full. Honestly, I was struggling just to get the game running and not crash non-stop because of all of Unity's memory issues um, and my inexperience working on um, the 3DS. So it took a while. It took a while to get it working properly. So unfortunately, I didn't have time to use Street Pass, and I would have loved to do Street Pass. Oh, man. Skies of Arcadia used the VMU on Dreamcast. Cool, what did what did Skies of Arcadia use it for? I've been watching videos of Dreamcast and VMU games, um, just hearing people talk about it because it's so cool. And I don't recall, um, I, didn't, I didn't see a video of anyone talking about what Skies of Arcadia did. Legend of Mana did use Pocket Station, sweet. Wait, why isn't Street Pass on Switch? That's the most important question. Absolutely, I'm hoping for the new Nintendo console, which I'm calling the Nintendo Stamp. Uh, uh, I'm hoping they have a street pass on there. Uh, Rashad Z, since you're using Unity, what kind of input system are you using? I really want to buy Rewired because it's way better written compared to the event based on Unity's new input system works. I'll show you. Since you're asking, I will show you how that works. I have written an input management system that lets me easily bring my games to any platform, any console, and I, I, in terms of controls, I only have to drag and drop one script, or drag and drop. And when I say drag and drop, I don't mean drag and drop. I mean dragon, like the mythical creature. I mean drag and drop. So I created something called the Sun Grand Control, Sun Grand Controller, and it uses layers. I need to, I need to go back to where I live. Okay. Whoa! Oh. I failed my gag. Gag failed. Gag failed. <laughs> ah, okay. Alright, so we'll look at my Sun Grand controller here. So, anything, any game logic that needs anything from an input. I can't open those because they are, I can't even click on those. I would, I would violate my contract with Nintendo if I opened those and showed you. So I cannot show you those. So this is Sun Grand controller. I'll open the logic. Anything in the game that requires input goes directly to this script, the Sun Grand controller. Uh, you can see all it does is it has logic for the button states. 
it's a bool of three, it's an array of three bulls, which is for being pressed, being held, and being released. Uh, and it has that for every single thing. This script on its own cannot affect these. But you can see like, get pressed, you know, get released, whatnot. Um, is my PSP thing in here? Okay, so I have to avoid, I have to avoid showing those. It would get me in huge trouble. I'll open the PC version, which doesn't have a lot. It's it's incomplete because I don't really use the PC that much. But this is a control layer. A control layer is what allows the hardware to interact with the Sungant Grand Controller. The control layer is what takes the logic from the, say for example, like the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con, the Wiimote, the Vita buttons. It reads those buttons and then it takes that logic and it puts that it changes the, ignore that stuff, you know, and it changes the states of the Sun Grand controller. So the Sun Grand controller is universal. This stuff is per platform, which means, like when I, um, when I, if when I make this game for the Vita, I don't have to reprogram a single piece of the controller. All I have to do is make sure the script is in there. I can even have Unity check if it's running on the Vita, so I don't actually have to do any work. It checks if it's running on the Vita using machine code, and then it enables that um, control layer. So that's how I make uh, my controls work on all my games. It used to be very time consuming making all that stuff work. These days, it's actually the easiest part of all my games because I created a universal script which handles all of the inputs. You know, if I go to my um, character, do I, do I type in player? Uh, gameplay, gameplay player. Let's see. You can see he has a Sun Grand controller. You can see that, if I just move it a little bit, I can show you how it works. He has the access le uh, left, access right, uh, and his button states. And again, um, true uh, if it's been pressed, if it's being held, if it's being released. And again, this can't do anything on its own. It is the control layer. This takes the controller from like your keyboard, your USB controller, and it changes those values. And this, uh, let's say for example, um, like the Eventide control map, this is asking for the, the Sun Grand controller. So let's go ahead and see what he's doing here. You can go to the top, so he's asked for the Sun Grand controller. There's going to be a lot of commented stuff here, commented out, but it's saying um, the actor movement is equal to the Sun Grand controller. So none of the game logic directly interacts with your controls. Otherwise you have to keep reprogramming everything over and over again for every different platform and it becomes a logistical complication and nightmare. So this lets me literally drop one script into my game objects and it, in terms of controls, will work on other platforms. So, yeah. Um, if one day I develop games for the PlayStation and Xbox, this is how I'll do it. All I have to do is program a brand new control layer, which would take like five minutes, if even, and then I drag and drop it. I don't have to program anything else in terms of controls. Okay, I will get caught up on the chat. Let me find something chill to listen to. Let's go for some chill vibes with the music here and get caught up with the chat. Drink in my cold coffee. Okay, I hope, you're, I hope I answered your question, Rashadzi. Uh, let's see. Nintendo not putting Street Pass on Switch is beyond sad. I, f I feel it, man. I really feel it. Hey, maybe Switch 2 will have Street Pass. Fingers crossed. That would be my probably my favorite, my most requ requested um, feature. Is I, I would love to do Street Pass stuff. I'd love to make Street Pass content um, for the new Nintendo. The new Tendo. The new Tendo Snap. Me versus where it's at. Yeah, they're all, you know, put them together. Put, put, put them both in there. Well, if you want Me versus, you can just mod your 3DS or Wii U and install that Pretendo or whatever it's called. That's so cool. Oh man, modders and, you know, people doing that stuff. That's so cool. You gotta keep keep the flame alive, man. Keep the spirit alive. Um, dude, I see the potential 
on your game and it looks awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You know, I'm really, with this project and the Kickstarter, I'm really trusting in the faith of people that they'll see what the game has to offer and that they'll trust me to deliver on that. And it's, I'm, I, I suppose I am a bit out of touch and, and naive in that respect is that I, I really have so much faith and trust in people around the world and I don't really have the understanding that there's so much cynicism because of all the the scams and the failed Kickstarter campaigns out there has really um, given people a reason to not trust you know so many projects out the gate um, and that's my fault for being out of touch in that respect you know uh, for me Nintendo went backwards in some ways on switch which is kind of said you know I think we all agree in general that we would have liked more of those features you know like the Miiverse and whatnot we I think we all would have liked that degree um, the Wii U the 3ds and Wii U era was so experimental and had so much charm to it that's what I love I love the experimental the charming stuff that's what I really like um, no street pass um, stopped focusing on me the online store is a mess I think the biggest weakness and what I'm having difficulty with as a developer is um, it's difficult for people to organically find your game on the eShop on the Switch. It's it's slow. The eShop on Switch is very difficult to navigate. Yeah. Uh, Luna Slayton. It was a mini game where you could get items like ultimate weapons and food for the little spear guy. Oh, on um, Skies of Arcadia. That's rad. I love that stuff. I love, I love you know, being able to v use the VMU to like search for treasure, the chow uh, situation for Sanic is so good. Um, heading out, Super Pixel Pals, take care, um, have fun, see ya. I hope you enjoy the content for Guardians and Metal Exterminators. Um, is this project gonna be open source? This one, no, because it has so much of my proprietary, proprietary code in here. So this won't be open source, but if we reach the uh, stretch goal for RPG Maker 2003, that one will be open source. So again, it will be all original graphics. I won't be using any of the built-in RPG Maker stuff, obviously. I will create 2D graphics so it looks like a Super Nintendo game, um, but it will still be Breath of Thunder. So when I do that RPG Maker 2003 version, the reason I'm doing RPG Maker 2003 is because people online have created something called Easy RPG, and Easy RPG can be installed on your 3DS, your Vita, your Wii, basically any other console. You can put Easy RPG on there, and you can play RPG Maker 2003 games. And so if I make Breath of Thunder on RPG Maker 2003, it's basically a Super Nintendo game, and I will distribute the project for that. So the RPG Maker version of Breath of Thunder is open source, and that's so people can make all of their own mods. They can, you know, make their own custom characters. They can change the world however they want, uh, and that's totally open source. Uh, and you can share that custom modded version of Breath of Thunder uh, with anyone. We'll we'll keep a community running. Uh, and you can play it on your consoles, you know, with Easy RPG. I did that with Silver Falls Mini, or Silver Falls uh, Frontier Fighters Mini. Uh, I I released that using RPG Maker, and I used Easy RPG so people could play that on their 3DS and their Vita. Let me get caught up with the chat here. Evolution on the Dream. Cast use the VMU screen as a way to show us um, secret walls on dungeons. Oh, that's rad! It'd be like the um, um, what's the? Oh no, my brain's drawing up. My brain is is going blank here. The um, the lens of truth, the lens of truth in Ocarina of Time. Somebody, <laughs> someone walking into like is a Simpsons reference. Yeah, and a deep cut at that. Uh, most. Old mixology professor asked Mo if he had a cure for cancer, and when he told him no, he just walked into the lake. Ow. Yeah. Um, Rashad C, why not just delete them? Great bit. Uh, wild anyone who remember it randomly. Uh, Night SPP. Uh, Resident Evil 2 lets us see ammo count and health, so we don't need to open the menu all the time. Yeah, that was rad. I, that blew me away. Um, because I didn't even know Code Veronica existed. I went over to a friend's house, and I think he had a cousin over, and his cousin had 
uh, Dreamcast and Code Veronica. And so that was my first time seeing it, is I didn't even know Code Veronica existed. And I was already a massive Resident Evil fan at that point. Um, and then I saw the help in the VMU, and I was like, this is the future, man. This is the coolest thing. So I'm a, I'm, I've always been a huge Code Veronica fan. I just love the whole Al Alfred Ashford. Um, I grew up watching the Legendary Frog stuff. That's probably a huge deep cut as well, if anyone remembers that. Uh, my friends and I would quote the Legendary Frog stuff over and over again. You know, where Alfred Ashford was like, I'm going to take this rifle, aim, and miss. Ah! Um, yeah, and that was like the f watching Flash cartoons, and they did all the parodies of Resident Evil. Man, I love that stuff. It's so great. We also remember Homer backing into a bush, uh, Skinner walking into the lake when, oh yeah, Skinner walking, and then he comes out the other side. That's great. Uh, cold coffee is not a uh, really good, um, but iced latte and other coffee-based cold drinks are delicious. At least your eShop e is just load slow. On Xbox, sometimes it just won't open. Yikes. Ooh. Crank functionality for Playdate, maybe you have to use it at water well. Um, I would use the um, crank so the battle system would be different on the play date. You would have a sort of um, a muscle meter. And during combat, when you're uh, preparing an attack for, for when I do the play date version, the crank is, you have to charge up your muscle, right? Um, and it shows a percentage of how far you're, you're going that. And you're, as soon as you stop, the game recognizes, okay, that's as far as your attack's going to go. And your attack will be as strong based on the percentage of the crank. But if you over-crank it, you can do more damage to the enemy, which you'll end up uh, um, sort of uh, getting some recoil from that. If you over-crank, you'll get some recoil, and it will also add more end lag to your next turn. So your next turn's going to be slower. So it's the matter of like quickly cranking it to try and get your attack wound up to be as strong as possible. Um, so it's a balancing act. So that's what the crank's going to be used for in the battle system of Breath of Thunder for the play date. Yeah. Code Veronica is your favorite RE. It was your third Dreamcast game and the first RE. You finished two. Nice. You still quote Alfred Ashford from Legendary Frog. Yes! Uh, Gino's A, I knew that we got along for a reason, uh, and this is it. Elaine, hello. Uh, hello. How, how are you? Um, developing an RPG. Okay, so yeah, um, someone told me that their characters were getting stuck. Okay, so this this in particular, you, you, you shouldn't be able to walk under there. Um, so, you know, in the actual version, I would fix it. But for things like that, this is just the playable teaser demo. Look, I want to reward people for getting their characters stuck on stuff, so I'm going to leave that in there in the playable teaser. So, uh, in Breath, uh, Breath of Fire 3, I was always trying to get my party members stuck on geometry. Um, and that was like a little reward for me. If I could get the characters stuck on something so bad that they had to teleport, uh, they had to disappear, disapparate, and then and then teleport next to me, um, that was kind of like a reward for me. So <laughs> we've, we've lost one, you guys. We've lost one. He's gone. Okay. So, um, yeah, if... You know, if, if the, we have continued interest in this project, I do want to add a little uh, forest area. So if, if we get more support, then in the next update to the Vibe Check teaser, uh, I will have a tour. You can go up here, you can explore a forest area, and you can get into battles. So um, again, I, I will need to work more on the battles. As you saw, let's just... Wait, is a the, is the little fellow there? Um, you can see that I have work to do on the UI. I need to figure out why the... A cursor is not showing up on the UI elements on the battle. So I just need to sort that out and I need to, to finalize the move sets uh, for these characters as well. Okay. And again, I'll, I'll have to reprogram all of the uh, battle camera animations to take into account that there is now a window here. I need to, but before I do that, I have to deploy this to switch, and I need to see what it looks like in handheld mode, so that the text is not too small on handheld mode, and I need to ensure that it's legible, it's easy to read in handheld mode. So that's why I'm not making 
all of these decisions right now? Is there things you have to take into account before you make these decisions? I'm gonna punch you. I'm a Okay, that guy only had a single punch. And what okay. Yeah. Honestly, what I would like is this I want I want this window to slide in and out, right? So when when the characters are taking action, they're fighting, I want this to slide that way so that only the health is visible on screen, right? Because once someone's acting, you don't need to see your MP, you don't need to see your morale, um, which is a mechanic from a previous game. Uh, I'm going to just change that um, to something else. Um, but you don't need to see that when the characters are acting, so I want this to slide out of the way so that you can see the, the action more. Uh, there's a lot of logic that I need to improve and enhance, like that. That's now, we can still see the text. Um, but yeah, that's where we are right now. Um, can you make the windows transparent? Abs they're supposed to be transparent. Yeah. I can make them, and they are supposed to be. So I need to figure out why the logic hasn't um, been performed, because I've specified that to be transparent programmatically. Um, so no cheating by attaching the hand crank to a battery drill, got it. That's right, because then you'll overcrank your character. Like, that's meant to be, like, say, for example, you, you're, you're in the middle of a difficult fight, you know, on the, on the Playdate version. And let's say your other characters are knocked out, you have one character left, and you're kind of thinking like, maybe if I can just get like one massive attack in, that could end the fight. And so you're kind of thinking, on the next one, I'm just gonna go all in 100%, I'm gonna use all my energy. And then you like, you know, crank as fast as you can, you do a massive attack, and then you deal tons of damage to the boss, and then that actually does it. That is a clutch situation where either the boss hits you and you die, or you deliver one massive attack and that finishes the, the battle and you win. And those are the kind of decisions that I want to leave in the player's hands. That would be very exciting on the play date. So that's why the battle system is going to be quite different on the play date versus the other versions, is it will rely on the crank. That's I love that kind of clutch situation where you go all in and you think, this is it, man. I'm either, I'm either just going to get killed here or uh, I'm going to win the match. You love massive attack. It's kind of like a, you know, like a, like a falcon punch situation. Like, all right, I'm going in. This is going to take the stock or, or knock me out. Uh, any swords and staffs for allies? Absolutely. Every character is going to use their own different thing. I'm going to show you something very, very personal here, very behind the scenes. I'm actually going to open my development notes, which I, I never do. I've never done this. Um, so this is probably a little, you know, it could be a little too much. But I'm going to open my development notes, and we'll we'll see what I, what we'll see what I've got here. Um, and I need to be very careful because there's a lot of Silver Falls stuff um, here as well. So I need to be really careful about what I show you guys. Yo, I was just taking rough notes on the weapons they use. Uh, let me see here. How do I not ruin this? We're going for it, baby. Uh, in life, you're just going to have to go for it sometimes. Uh, here we go. Please do not mind all of these. Don't look. I'm going to ask you guys to not look at the names. These are other games, other IP that I have in development that I've been planning and doing a lot of documentation on. Do not look at the names, please. They're very secret. Don't look. It's going to ruin everything. Uh, okay, so Hero uses swords? Look. We all want different, we, we all want our blue haired protagonists to do different things. We're all tired of protagonists, you know, who just use the sword. But in this particular situation, I'm aiming for a classic feel, so I have the hero, the protagonist, using a sword. My next RPG, I promise, will, will be more interesting when it comes to that. So Zira uh, is a princess. She uses a magic staff. She is like your um, massive damage dealer. She's a glass cannon. She can do tons of damage very quickly. Strike, uh, who is in the teaser. Uh, see, he uses throwing weapons. Okay, Sakana. Okay, so let's see if we have. A, I'm gonna zoom in so we can read this a little bit. Again, please don't look. Please don't look at those. Okay. So she has um, healing and defensive magic. Uh, it's mostly, you know, uh, she mostly like flora based, but she gets other stuff as well. 
uh, let's see, throwing a weapon. Strike doesn't really use um, magic so much, but then, you know, I don't want to ruin everything. I want to, I want you to discover stuff on your own. Okay, um, uh, Sakana, he uses a bow, he has water and ice magic. Uh, let's see, Fiore is a bear, uh, she uses a physical power, high physical power, uses claws, and I, I didn't type it in here, um, but I think she'll have um, some weak um, floor magic and some earth magic. Uh, Tarnok is a lumberjack, um, uses an, an axe. Uh, Mimi, a pirate who ambushes travelers on highways and steals their treasure. She is cunning and clever. Mimi is the cat in the teaser. Uh, let's see, she uses knives. Uh, Howl. Howl is one again one of your. I think he's going to be the one of the better healers. He's a wolf. He has really strong healing magic. He has strong attack magic. He uses magic orbs. So magic orbs is they kind of like, it's kind of like a, they they send it out and then the orb thumps the enemy on the face and then the orb returns to you, you know. Uh, so yeah, and it kind of floats in their hand. That's what the orb is. Uh, Pio Pico is the slime. He has the slime magic. He uses spears. Uh, Dokubari is the scorpion. Um, he has access to poison and earth magic, and he has a strong sense of justice. He uses swords and knives. So here we have our optional characters. These are ones that are not mandatory, but they if you want to play through the game multiple times, you can have a totally different party each time. Uh, Fiore, he uses spears and wind magic. Uh, let's see. Teria is a human. She uses bows. She has fire magic. And I didn't write it in there, but of course I need it. Here's the thing, like, the reason why I have not finalized the move sets for the characters is because you need to look at your characters not just as standalone characters, but as an ensemble. And you need to determine where the balance of power is going to be for your ensemble. And that's also why I have not shown that much from the battle system, is I haven't uh, finalized the move sets for all of these characters. And I don't just want to randomly throw moves onto them nonstop. So I need to say like, oh, Sakana has f a water magic. Who would it make sense to give fire magic? Because naturally, culturally, we understand fire and water are opposites. So it would be interesting if I gave fire magic to a character that maybe Sakana has opposite moral values to, if their beliefs, if their belief systems and their structures are opposite to each other, if they are two characters that don't get along, then it would be very interesting if that character had fire magic and Sakana had water magic. And I have not yet made those decisions, so that's why I have not shown that much from the battle system yet. So let's see, we have Pomporia, another slime, uh, flirty. She uses magic orbs and has a variety of elemental magic. So there's a magic user that has a bunch of different elements. Uh, Dordio is a from the Flora clan. He uses powerful nature magic. Uh, Kujira uses a magic staff. Uh, strong healing and support magic. Some water magic. Suzy is a wolf. She uses claws. Uh, Zoldo uses axes. Talo is the Kai. Uh, my notes are really like, you know, don't look, don't look at my notes. Uh, some attack magic. Buraun is from the Moose uh, clan. Uh, very strong high defense uses throwing weapons. And again, this may, um, the Moose clan may not even appear. These are notes that I put in there. I have other characters from other clans that I haven't built unique graphics for, and I'm not sure if I'm going to include those yet. So there we go. Very personal. Uh, those are my notes. Don't read too much into it. Please don't. I hope you didn't look at all that other stuff. Okay. Is there any revivals in this game? Matthew Williams, you can revive your party members if they get knocked out, but also you saw the enemy's bodies stay there when they're knocked out. Enemies can be revived as well. So you have to be careful with your with with the order in which you approach enemies because certain enemies will revive their party members. Hey, Zelda 64 fan. Good to see ya. Good to see ya. Good to see ya, Terry. I'm getting, I'm getting caught up. put that on. Uh, you missed my comment above. I'm going to scroll up. Pseudo pseudonym? Let me see. Uh, let's see. Gina say, I remember that one too. Also remembered Homer back into the bush. Was there? I'm sorry if I missed your comment. It's This is why it's difficult to, to work um, 
and and chat at the same time, you know. Uh, might want to hide those because some people will legit look anyway. I'll just I'll just ask you to not look, and then um, I trust you to not read that stuff. Um, any special moves planned, like a limit break sort of move? Um, at the moment, um, no, I I don't have anything planned for that because I that you tend to rely on those as a as a crutch, uh, and they kind of become the crux of your strategy in RPG because those moves are so powerful. And I want to put the focus on the battle system in your planning. You can see via the trait system um, and you know all of all the unique abilities. All the characters have unique you know setups in terms of the access they have to elemental magic and abilities. There's going to be a heavy emphasis on stat buffing. I want the emphasis on battles to be on that. So I, I don't think I will implement a sort of a limit break system. Uh, pseudonym, hey, can you address my chat from above? I don't want to hang up the stream all day long. Um, Google Legume of Zeldoom. Oh, is that is that your... Great, thanks. Legume of Z Zeldoom. Great, okay, and this is Pseudonym's Kickstarter. Thanks for reminding me. Let's have a look. Guys, I'm, I'm going to be um, a YouTuber. This is my React channel. I will be reacting to Kickstarters. So if you have any Kickstarters you want me to react to, just go ahead and put them. Hold on. Let me put... Oops. Let me put my um, YouTuber... This is my YouTuber glasses. Yo! What up, fam? What up, fam? Welcome to my YouTube channel, Sungran fam. Today we're going to be... Uh, reacting to some Kickstarter uh, campaigns. This is my first time react. I've never seen it before. Um, burr, 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 burr. What up, YouTube? Um, there we go. So I'm a YouTuber now. Uh, and this... Um... <laughs> okay, it's like your scrolling is perfectly timed to miss my old and new messages. <sighs> Must be fate. It Must be fate. Okay, Topeka, Kansas. Hey, cool. Um... I like this perspective. I really like the shading that you have on the shadows. It's very expressive. It really helps give dimensionality. Um, especially in this perspective, you really need to do something to give dimensionality. Like you can see that stare down and stare up. So yeah, I, I really like that. Yeah. It's a hybrid game inspired by two uh, of my favorite games, Zelda and Doom. Nice, I get the name. Java developer. You, you'll be able to bring us to a lot of different platforms. You have working prototypes of core functionality, but there's still a lot of improvements uh, to make. Uh, what sort of pictures do you have? If I, if I scroll down, will the will there be more pictures? What sort of uh, what sort of music do you have? Yeah, scope creep. You're right. Scope creep is a big issue, especially when you're when you're new to um, working on on projects where you're just so excited about them. You can really uh, get lost in the weeds, and you can end up putting too much scope in. So there we go. Oh, get your name in the game. Nice. Personalized Easter eggs. Very cool. Receive a uh, unique character sprite to play in the game. Oh, sweet. I customize avatars. Nice one. Cool, you can discuss the game. Real cool. In-game monument. That's a good one. Nice. Design a level or quest. I think people would really like that. You know? Uh, even if they could just draw it out, you know, on paper and then send you a picture, you can design it that way. That's awesome. So, it's kind of like you're combining Zelda and Doom and putting it into one. That's pretty cool. Well, I hope your campaign goes well. Um, it's so hard. It's so hard to run a Kickstarter starter campaign. There's so much you have to know about it, and I, I'm the wrong person um, to ask about Kickstarter because uh, I think I'm not very good at running a Kickstarter campaign. It's it's not one of my strengths. You need to know a lot. You need to have your finger on the pulse of um, culture on the internet, and um, I think I'm a little out of touch when it comes to that. So, anyway, you guys check this out. See if that's something you're into. You know, you guys look up um, Legume 
of Cell Doom. I love that name. That's so great. And like and subscribe. Yep. All right. Okay, I'm done being a YouTuber. That's it. There we go. <laughs> You've been pulling, putting in 16-hour days. Yeah. As a, as a solo developer, you're going to have to put in hours like that. It's just difficult. That's just how it is. Um, and, you know, I... I don't want you to, to be discouraged and whatnot, but there's there's a strong chance that you'll put thousands of hours into a game. It'll be the absolute best thing that you can do. You put it online, and the first thing you see is people saying, uh, this is trash, it's the worst thing I've ever played. You just gotta be prepared for it, you gotta be ready for it, man. It, it's gonna happen, you know? Uh, and it still happens to me to this day, and that's just how it is, you know? Some people will hate your stuff, some people will love your stuff. You just gotta keep doing what you love because it's what you wanna do. And if you are happy, because you've made that, because you've accomplished something, and it's to the best of your ability, focus on that. It doesn't matter what kind of negativity comes your way. Stay positive, man. Stay positive. Uh, Jim Killers Drill, do you still have the Starfield glasses? Let me check my gag box over here. my box of gags um, so I actually had never heard of Starfield during one of our streams and um, the people in the people in chat were talking about Starfield I don't even know what Starfield is are these Starfield glasses it's like a sci-fi a cyberpunk sort of glasses I I think this is what every Starfield character looks like see I don't actually know about Starfield I but I'm, I'm gonna say that's my favorite open-world RPG um, despite the fact that I know nothing about it. Because if I say that, um, it upsets people. Um, so that's why I say that Starfield is my favorite open world RPG. I, I'd say that it's better than... It's better than Skyrim. Um, it's... It's uh, better than Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, it's better than Baldur's Gate 3. So I'm gonna say Starfield's my favorite open world RPG. I'll show you some of the characters as well. I haven't shown every character. Um, so what do we have? Let me, I'll show you some of the characters here. Okay. I've modeled all of the playable characters. Uh, they're in here. This is Zoldo. Let's put him in there. Yeah, I'm a, oh, this guy's cool. This guy's sweet. This is an optional character. I really like this guy. Uh, I just wanted to give it some sort of like Legend of Mana vibes. You know how they have like the rock dude who's kind of uh, reminiscent of um, the never-ending story. I was sort of going for that vibe of like a, a living rock, you know. So this clan is the rock clan. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to give him, you know, uh, a different colored arm. You know, his body is like this. And I was kind of thinking like that would be part of the story is that, you know, years ago he was maybe involved in some battle, and during that battle his arm was destroyed, and so he lost his arm. And, you know, I, I, I kind of think the Rock Clan is able to regrow their limbs, but they can also regrow their limbs with different materials. So I'm kind of thinking, like, now that's like a sapphire limb, or something to that effect. Um, just something interesting for the character, you know? All right. Sarah... Okay, so this build doesn't have her hair. On, on my other machine, I have it to where I've, I've put her hair in there. This one's missing that, so I'll go ahead and just have to fix that. Let's see, Teria. Oh, she's missing her hair, too. So there's something wrong with this build. It's missing, um, excuse me, it's missing the hair. So this this fork of the game. Well, I'll put, I'll put them in there anyway. You can see, see them without their hair, and then you can see them later on. I was sort of leaning into a, a Wild West feeling character uh, with Teria. She's sort of got that, um, like a, a yellow desert dress. Uh, she's got that leather jacket. Uh, she's got these pouches on the side that give her that real Wild West RPG feel. Uh, she is meant to have hair, of course. Um, I just uh, don't have it in this uh, branch of the game for some reason. And she uses a bow to fight. This guy, oh man, I just love the vibe of this guy here. 
Oops. Pico. This guy is kawaii. <laughs> okay, so I need to go and fix um, the shader. He doesn't have um, the right shader selected. So let's select that. You can see it, it doesn't look right. See? Um, I just need to be able to see behind the chat here. Click on Tune and Standard. This is a custom in-house shader. It lets me have a sense of specularity while having the uh, ramp as well for the shadows. Pomporia is uh, one of the optional playable characters, and she's a female from the Slime Clan. She's more ma uh, magic. I think she's more of a magic caster than um, Puyo Pico. So Pomporia, you have Mimi, we have Kujira. Let's have a look at Kujira. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is uh, more of a magic-based uh, fish guy. There we go. We have Howl. This is gonna be one of the better healing characters. I just need to make sure I maintain a sort of an easygoing vibe with the music here. Okay, um, Fiore, and I think we'll wrap up on the stream here. My studio gets very hot. I don't have air conditioning in my studio. It's actually getting really brutal right now. So I think I'm gonna wrap up pretty soon, and then I will make myself some lunch. Okay, we've seen Fidori. So yeah, uh, she's from the Bear Clan. We have um, Dordio. Dordillo is from the Flora clan. That's the same clan as Zira. Sorry, I'm kind of zooming around here, aren't I? Uh, pseudo Nim. Hey, Drone, my game prototype is live. Check it out. Oh, okay. And the prototype is uh, playable on the um, Kickstarter? Are you able to, to tell me where the uh, where the playable prototype is? Oh, if you're trying to send a link, then YouTube filters it out. That makes sense. Yeah. A Zelda N64 fan. Starfield is actually a good game. I, I don't know that much about it. I saw some videos. It looked really cool. In space. Um, Starfield's glasses. Um, okay, so I'm going to, I'll just go ahead and put on, I have these glasses here, I, I don't know, I bought these for a, a bit, a gag bit, and I don't remember what that gag bit was going to be, um, um, but here we are, these are game developer glasses, these let you see in 4D, um, and they let you, so when you're programming, there's code inside the code, Normal human eyeballs can't see it because normal human eyeballs are kind of weak, honestly. Um, but these are game dev glasses. Um, they let you see time and space. They let you see into the human soul. They let you see what the soul is worth and let you see what it's not worth. And they also let you see the code inside the code. So when you need to develop um, real good, you put these game developer glasses on and um, they allow you to make video game real good. Ooh. What other characters was I was I bringing in here? I kind of I'm not sure if that's everyone I had to share right now. We have our NPCs as well. What was that? Oh, Dokubari. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and show Dokubari in there. Yeah. So all the characters, all their graphics are ready to roll. Oh, this is an older version. So this one doesn't have his tail, and he's got a hat. I would have to go and grab the other version. Um, the difficulty is that the camera's pulled back, and it's it sort of... I was sort of angling the hat, and it sort of gets in the way of the um, expressiveness of the character. Uh, and so he's actually not going to wear a hat. Uh, I'm just going to remove that. He's missing his scorpion tail. This guy has a scorpion tail, and his tail uh, allows him to cast poison magic. Um, I think they're the only clan that get to use poison magic. So, Yeah, anyway, those are the other characters. It's actually difficult for me to see with these. I, I'm kind of remembering why I 
I didn't use those for a gag before. A Zelda 64 fan also was wondering how many playable characters you plan on having for this game if you have a rough, rough estimate. There are 10 mandatory characters for the storyline, there are 8 optional characters, um, and for each console, for each individual platform, if we're bringing it to the other platforms, again, it just depends on how far we get with the Kickstarter stretch goals. Depending on how far we get, um, one of the optional characters will be unique to that platform. So every version of the game on different platforms will have at least one unique playable character that does not exist in the other versions. So that way, at least it'll be fun when you play the different versions of the game and you will have a different character. On the site, but I can't say so or my comic won't go through. Okay, so look, we'll, we'll have a look. I'll, I'll look into that more after um, the stream. But um, yeah, you guys, see if see if Le uh, Legume of Zeldum is something you're interested in. Um, yeah, have a look at that. Uh, look it up. See if that's something you're interested in. I'll, I'll have a look after the stream. So I'll just hang out and chat with you guys. Now we'll wind down. We'll wind down and chat, and then we'll wrap up the stream in a couple minutes. So. Um, yeah, if there's, if there's anything you want to talk about, if there's anything you want to chat about, we can do that now if you have any more questions. Um, yeah, we'll do that. I'll put on some chill, here we go, some chill Ruby River music. Oh, I drank all my coffee cold, okay. Uh, but I want you to show it on stream. I, I couldn't find it, unfortunately. Um, I didn't see the link for it on the... Uh, Couldn't, I couldn't find the link for it on the Kickstarter. I'll have a look for it later. Um, Legume of Zeldum prototype? I'm going to Google prototype here. Legume of Zeldum. I'm, I'm Googling uh, Legume of Zeldum prototype. Right. I, I can see the Kickstarter campaign, but I don't see the link for a playable... Uh... You heard the music and looked to the stream to make sure you, wasn't, you weren't missing a cutscene in-game. In it's kind of a shame YouTube won't let you... See. Now it's coming up in Japanese. No, Chinese. I don't know why it's putting Kickstarter in Chinese. Huh. Hold on, I, there's a YouTube video here. I'll open your YouTube video. How about that? We'll have a look. Okay, cool. We'll put that, okay, this is Legumo's, Legumo's El Doom. Let's have a look. Legumo'sEldoom.com yeah, okay, all right. Well, we'll wrap things up. It's getting kind of warm in here. Okay, well, thanks, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's been great fun hanging out and just chatting and getting to share the game with you. Um, so after I wrap up the stream, I'm going to make some lunch, and then I'm going to get the playable teaser working on the Vita. I have to do some optimizing, of course. The frame rate is probably going to be a little rough because it, it takes a long time to optimize a game for the Vita. So I'll get it as well as I can um, get it working and then you can try it on your Vita. And for me personally, oh, I can't wait to see it running on that OLED screen. I have the uh, Vita Model 1. Um, I'm not trying to shame um, the LCD screen on the Model 2 for Vita. I'm not shaming that. I'm just saying I'm all about the OLED screen. So, okay. Uh, take care, everyone. Uh, hey, great. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, Ram A91. So it's been great. It's been so much fun hanging out with everyone. Please take care of yourselves. I will share more details and I'll check in again soon with, with more details about Breath of Thunder. Uh, but I am also finishing up my other commercial games. That's Gorgeous Sword, Long Hard Justice, and Sweet Abominations. So I'll be bringing that to many different platforms. Uh, I'm wrapping those up and I'll be preparing them for submission. So hopefully we can get them launched soon. Uh, and again, the, the Silver Falls games, if you want to try the Silver Falls games, that are available on Nintendo Switch as well. Okay, good night everyone. Take care. It's good to see everyone. Take care. All right, we'll see ya.
thanks very much for, for watching and enjoying and, and uh, supporting the Kickstarter.